Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Plymouth United Church of Christ. It's good to see you here today. Um, if you want to have some Easter flowers, the sign-ups or the slips are on the table in the um, in the parlor, and we don't we have like one or two at the moment. So we're hoping a few more people would like to have some Easter flowers. Um, this afternoon at one o'clock, there's going to be a rally in Elkhorn for Ukraine. So if you're interested in participating in that, we invite you to join us. Um, in the downtown square, I think. We're still collecting souls for souls um, through the end of this month, if you'd like to participate in that. And <clears throat> we also are still collecting money for the emergency buckets for church world service to offset some of our costs. Um, we gather here in this season of Lent to be reflective, to examine our life, and to, to worship our God. May we worship our God. First gospel reading is Isaiah 55, 1 to 9. Oh, please join me to the call of worship. Come, who are all thirsty. Come, who are waiting. Come, all who waiting. Come, who are waiting. Come, all who need rest. Come, come all who dream dreams. Come, whether you're young or old, confident or curious, lonely or hopeful, this is God's house. All are welcome here. Let us worship holy God. Our song is on number nine.
Now, I will read the scriptures. Isaiah 55, 1 to 9. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk. Without money and without price, why do you need to spend your money for that which is not bread? And for your and your labor for that which it does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear, come to me. Listen so you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples. See, you shall call all nations that you do not know. And nations that you do not know shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteousness of their thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The gospel is from Luke 13, 1, 9. At that very time, there were some present who told them about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, do you think that because the Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Shalom fell on them, do you think they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Then he told his parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he became looking for the fruit, and he found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I can find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit the next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. Dear Holy God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations on our hearts, and even the wanderings of our minds come to this place that in spite of all of our words, we might hear your word. Amen. We really live in a throwaway society. We throw away everything. We, we build new buildings and then we tear them down and we build other new buildings. We, we don't preserve anything. We don't even really preserve life. There was a tree, a fig tree, in the vineyard, and it wasn't producing fruit. Well, first of all, why do you have a fig tree in a vineyard? What's it doing there in the first place? And I don't know enough about really anything, but you know, is it because it's in the vineyard that it's not producing fruit? Is, it, is that, that the right soil for it? I don't know. But the owner wants to just top, chop it down, get rid of it. But Jesus says, wait a minute here, in his parable. Why don't we first take, try to take care of it? And what we have here are the hands underneath the soil tending to the fig tree. And as you're going up, what you have is water and air and sunlight and nutrients, all the things needed to help the tree to grow. 
So often, we live in such a black and white world. Just get rid of it, it's not working anymore. Rather than trying to see the potential for what's there. We do it with plants, we do it with things, we do it with people. Just get rid of them. Get them out of your life because they're caustic or whatever. And trying to find ways to nurture and to grow. We do it with ourselves. So often during Lent, we focus on penitence rather than giving ourselves a little bit of grace, a little bit of hope, a little bit of nurture, that we can be the better people that we know we can be. Yes, we need to repent of those things that we do wrong, but there's got to be grace with that. And too often we skip the step of allowing ourselves to have some grace and some nurture. We throw ourselves away. We're not good enough. We're not successful enough. When God is saying, wait a minute, you're good enough for me. You're successful enough for me. Where is the hope in all that? The Isaiah text, Aaron, can you switch the side, please? Thank you. <clears throat> the people of Israel have been in exile for like 30, 40 years. And Isaiah is saying to the people, Come to God. Come, come, if you're thirsty, come and get a drink. If you're hungry, come and I will feed you. It's a, it's a text of hope. And what we have here, it's supposed to be a feast. I'm not quite seeing it, but maybe somebody else does. <laughs> but the, um, the framing of it is a vessel. And it's a vessel that is filled up, and it's a vessel that is also being emptied out. If we don't fill ourselves up, we can't empty out for others. If we don't feed ourselves first, we can't feed other people. If we don't give ourselves some grace, we won't have that grace to offer to other people. If we don't see hope in our own lives, how do we offer hope to other people? Today's stories are about being enough. Today's stories are about being fully who we are, as we are. Today's stories are about God's love, God's grace, and God's hope for our lives. But we have to hear it, and we have to own it. We have to own it. We are enough. We are God's children. What more do we need to be? Amen.
There is something so healing, so life-giving about telling our stories. In the prayer of confession, that is what we get to do. The mask comes off. Any pretense of perfection is removed. We let the pressure to perform slip away, and we sit here face to face with God, sharing honestly who we long to be. Friends, there is healing here. There is life to be gained here. So join me in this moment of honesty. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Holy God, we treat our self-worth like something that can be bought at a store. But you know this even better than we do. Instead of trusting that we are made good, instead of trusting that we are loved exactly as we are, we stockpile our value in earthly things in trophies and awards, in likes and follows, in wealth and power. Forgive us for creating our own measuring stick. Heal our open wounds and tell our hearts that we won't be forgotten if we slow down. We won't be forgotten if we rest. Gratefully, we pray. Good and gracious God, as we come here to join together for worship, we come to you fully who we are, with our successes, with our failures, with everything that you have created us to be. In this time of worship, we come seeking healing and grace, especially as we look around our hurting world and see all that is going awry. Remind us, dear God, that we are loved, we are cherished, that we are yours. And inspire us to go forth from this place, reminding others that they are loved, that they are cherished, and that they too are yours. There is so much that needs healing in our world. We pray for all the people of Ukraine. And we also pray for Russia, that healing can happen, that transformation can take place, that lives can be spared. We pray for the nations that sit by and watch, wondering what the right thing to do. We seek your wisdom. We seek your hope. There are many on our prayer list that need your healing. We pray for each and every one of them. Andy, Wanda, Marilyn, Tina, Lois, Bonnie, Paul, Carrie and family, Donna, Mike, Jill, Bill, Jim, Joyce, Ruby, Pat, Larry, Jamie, Bailey, Lynn, Lucas, Elaine, and Doug. You are the one that knows the healing that needs to take place. We put each and every one of these people into your hands. We pray for our Mother Earth, for the healing of the earth, and again, we need you to inspire us to take care of our earth rather than to abuse it. We pray for our church as it goes through its search process. We pray for patience. We pray for wisdom. We pray for that one who will come to serve us in the future. Life is a cycle. We are born we die, and we are reborn again into life eternal. We pray for those who have lost their lives and for their families who, who grieve. We pray for the families of Anna, Katarana, Carol, Jim, Amy. 
May each of these families come to a point where they don't know resurrection hope and they can celebrate once again. We each have come here on different paths, and so we pause for a moment of silence so that you, you can hear all that we have to offer from our hearts, and that hopefully in that silence we can find a space to listen to your prayer for us. Be with us in prayer, dear God. Having heard us in the silence of our hearts, hear us now as we bring all of our voices together as one and pray the prayer which your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, take a deep breath. Release the tension in your jaw. There is good news here. For even when we stumble, even when we take the easy way out, even when we forget our own self-worth, even when we lose our way, we belong to God. Say it with me. We are loved, we are claimed, we are under God's wing. We are worthy of grace. We belong to God. Amen. Uh, both I believe everyone got an envelope for one great hour of sharing. Um, we will be collecting that all this month. That is in, actually an ecumenical offering that goes for disaster relief. It's the one offering that almost all denominations take to respond to all the natural disasters we have. And the mission team is making a, wants to do a matching gift up to $1,000 for Ukraine. We're going to give that through the United Church of Christ. So if you'd like to do something for Ukraine, we invite you to do that, and the mission team will match up to $1,000 of that. So we have opportunities to be generous, we have opportunities to make a difference, and we can do it together. Let us join together in the affirmation of faith that is in your bulletin. We believe that the God of the cosmos is at work here. We believe that God is fertilizing the soil. We believe that God is planting roots. We believe that God is growing fruit that is yet to be tasted. But until that promised day, when the fig tree stands tall and swords are beaten into plowshares, we believe when our work does not bear fruit, God still loves us. When our soil grows dry and cracked, God still longs for us. When all seems hopeless here on earth, God holds hope for us. 
The God of the cosmos is at work here. We believe. Help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our closing song, our song is number 553, There is a Balm in Gilead. As you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh, and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit, and may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and the love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen.